Hello viewers, Namaste and very good afternoon. Welcome to our Facebook live session. And today we are going to discuss the topic attending cancer care during this COVID-19 crisis. And as we all know that we are facing this global COVID-19 and many unknowns. It may be particularly stressful for those who are undergoing the treatment of cancer and they care taken. To discuss this, we have Dr. Hemant Verma, who is our head and neck surgical oncologist at Apollo Hospital, Vishakhapanna. If you have any queries regarding this, you can drop us a message in the comment box. We can take them during the live session. Welcome, Doctor. Welcome to our Facebook live session. Thanks very much for the uh, introduction, Ruja. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I am Hemant Verma. Head and neck surgeon at Apollo Cancer Hospitals, Vishakhapatnam. Well, today I am here to discuss the implications of the ongoing COVID-19 crisis upon the cancer care of head and neck cancer patients. Well, February 11, 2020, WHO has announced the name for the new outbreak and virus of the novel Corona as COVID-19, and March 11th, WHO has declared this COVID-19 as pandemic outbreak. And this is, uh, this had uh, tremendous implications on each and every person, person's daily routine since the last three months as we see. And this is going to last for quite some time more until we have vaccination in our hand. So, but unfortunately, facts cannot be changed. As a matter of fact, I want to remind everyone, COVID can stop uh, our routine, but COVID has got nothing to do to stop the ongoing tumor progression, which I mean to say, all the head and neck cancer patients, for any cancer patient, the tumor uh, nature, by nature, tumors keeps on growing and it has got nothing to stop and nothing to do with any kind of lockdown measures, whatever the governments are taking to combat the present pandemic outbreak situation. So uh, these are the things which need to be kept in mind, especially those people who suspect themselves as if one is having the symptoms of any of the symptoms of a uh, query of uh, uh, cancer, they need to definitely uh, get into touch with the uh, specialist doctor to rule out if they have got any kind of uh, uh, proven or uh, uh, proven cancer or if they are fine with it. So. Uh, let us have a brief discussion in the, into the same perspective and uh, I welcome any of the queries in this regard. Yeah. Thank you, Doctor, for this brief introduction. Uh, doctor, coming to the first question, how common are head and neck cancers? Okay, how common are head and neck cancers? Well, in this part of the world, head and neck cancers contribute almost more than 50% of total cancers which have been registered in this country, Southeast Asian countries. Of that, Indian subcontinent shares uh, more than uh, the half of the head and neck cancers across the globe every year. And this part of the world, especially Indian subcontinent and uh, uh, low mid middle income countries, uh, due to the various factors like uh, tobacco usage at various forms, let it be the smokable, non-smokable, in form of quits and chewing tobacco and all other scenarios. Uh, the incidence of adrenal cancer is uh, much, much uh, more when compared to the usual uh, Western community. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, what are the symptoms of adrenal cancer? Uh, well, symptoms, coming to the symptoms, uh, usually uh, if one is have, one, if a person have uh, the ulcer which is not healing for since quite some time, more than uh, three weeks, 
especially in oral cavity that might be a, uh, in tongue or some kind of like any of the mucosal lining of oral cavity or else if someone have it got a nasal blockage quite some uh, since uh, two we last two to three weeks and not subsiding in spite of using antibiotics which were been prescribed by the your local family doctor and uh, any of the person is facing a problem of difficulty in swallowing uh, again the same uh, more than three two to three weeks and uh, if one is experiencing change in voice more than two weeks and uh, a person is uh, has seen a lump in the neck uh, again more than three to four three weeks and if it is not going to subside with the medication which you have got from your family physician uh, that is the usual clinical feature how the head and neck cancers present that's the time when you need to uh, get, i mean question yourself uh, is that a matter of worry and should i uh, see the concerned expert specialist thank you doctor uh, doctor how head and neck cancer differ from other uh usually head and neck cancers are uh, uh, in my perspective it's much much different when compared to the other cancers because when you uh, the, when you mean head and neck cancer the cancer or tumors across the head and neck region so called the tumors just below the brain and uh, above the lungs uh these are the this is the anatomical area in the whole of the human body uh which are stated to be head and neck cancers so uh he or she is known to the society by this head and neck area which is most visible so the corresponding person personality is recognized by the society by your face and neck region so whenever there is a, a treatment uh i mean rendered for the head and neck tumors uh it 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 has got a lot of implications when it comes to scar when it comes to form of the face and the shape of the face so that's the reason there is a lot of uh outtake uh, uh i mean whenever there is a, a treatment ongoing or uh, uh, i mean done treatment for these head and neck tumors so that's how they are different otherwise the rest of the oncological pains are must be fairly the similar but that's the only different factor thank you doctor how aggressive are head and neck cancers well head and neck cancers are uh, i mean not all head and neck cancers are at same uh, aggression through biology so when you consider oral cavity tumors which are much much common in this part of world so they are fairly aggressive disease whereas thyroid it is not very aggressive at least you will have more time when compared to the other set of tumors in head and neck region the rate at which they grow so again a larynx or a throat uh, tumor uh, it is again uh, comparatively a bit less aggressive than oral cavity so but still uh, this uh, i mean whichever Uh, the malignancy or a tumor in head and neck region uh, it need to be addressed uh, not more than 3 uh, to 4 weeks so in this regard i would like to add on in medical sciences we need to uh, we used to call tumor doubling time so the tumor doubling time for the head and neck cancer is uh, over uh, Uh, 23 days in squamous cell carcinoma so within the various uh, if not uh, we days within few months uh, within few weeks the tumor keeps on growing uh, from the stage of uh, curable to from the stage of non curable to difficult curable stage thank you doctor doctor what are the implications of covid 19 on Cancer Again, as I already mentioned, uh, due to the ongoing COVID-19 uh, uh, lockdown procedure, a lot of uh, uh, patients will have the problems to 
show up to the uh, specialist doctor although they have the symptoms of uh, all which all the set of symptoms i already mentioned uh, so uh, and at the same time we are going to uh, face the similar scenario for quite some time so uh, the whoever has got the uh, as a symptoms they will have to uh, get permission from the consent authorities and i'm sure they will definitely get uh, their uh, permission to visit the nearby uh, oncology facility to get the solution required thank you doctor one of the viewer is ram gopal he is asking doctor we would like to understand the consequences of the recent visor gas leak on the head and neck cancer patient and and what kind of precaution should be taken care do we have any long term consequences on consequences on this patient well uh, yeah mr ram gopal to answer your question it's it's uh, there is a gas leakage uh, recently at uh, resac patnam yes but uh, uh, it is vinyl benzene in a chemical active chemical form yes it is having the oncogenic capacity but if you ask me right now there might not be consequences with re with regard to head and neck cancer so uh, probably they might have the more susceptibility to develop kind of lung cancer or liver cancer in long term although i am not an expert of lung or liver as well as of now there are not much implications with regard to the head and neck cancer thank you doctor how to know the stages of head and neck cancers uh, well it is a, a simple usually head and neck cancer doesn't show up with uh, very much subjective symptoms like pain one will find a ulcer which is been uh, inside the uh, mouth since some time maybe more than 2 weeks but but uh, it's it's not uh, very painful that's the reason why he or she would not show up to the physician immediately so once uh, if someone comes to the uh, i mean feels comes to the clinic uh, with complaint of pain which means uh, that must be a bit uh, more advanced stage of uh, tumor we can say otherwise unless you visit a Uh, physician or a or a expert specialist, uh, they they will be assessing you clinically, and uh, with the aid of the few scans, they would be telling you the exact staging of the uh, disease. Thank you, doctor. Doctor, what are what is the role of surgeon in advanced head and neck cancer? Uh, role of surgeon in head and neck cancer. advanced head and neck cancer that's the question right uh, well uh, in advanced cancer uh, and whenever a surgeon assumes the responsibility of a head and neck cancer patient uh, let it be the advanced stage there uh, our primary our prime goal where you know goal first goal for any oncologist would be the cure of the cancer Uh, which might not be practically uh, not possible in terms of advanced uh, cancer where the curative probability might be not possible practically so that's not the end of the story that's where the actual uh, action also begins for a surgeon or for a onco surgeon uh, if maybe we might not be able to prolong the expectancy of the advanced uh cancer head and neck cancer patients but still uh we the the compartment of the limited time which they are having to enrich the life with the comfort rather than uh allowing them to lead painful and uh, uh difficult life itself is going to be much crucial for example if if not we Uh, we were not able maybe we cannot uh, cure it but still we can we can just uh, make the patient feel comfortable uh, manage them pain wise we can get, bring down the pain and we can bring down the bad odor which might be bothering 
and the patient and patient caregivers for quite some time and we can just uh, help the patient for uh, improve their swallowing capacity and uh, we can treat the uh, control the bleeding which might be which is again a uh, common symptom for the uh, advanced adenoid disease so that that itself uh, is something very important with regard to patient's perspective when it comes to uh, advanced cancer care it's not just uh, uh, not able to cure the disease but like make the balance life of the patient more meaningful would be the target for any oncologist for that matter thank you doctor doctor uh, what are the risk of getting exposed to covid well for us to get uh, i mean exposed to the covid 19 is people because we at apollo hospitals wizag have a infection control team tremendously working around the clock uh, for example our opd the way we started opd since this outbreak uh, came much uh, fluent in this part of world uh, we made a single entrance for all the outpatient and inpatient and in that single entrance on there will be two lines handled by the two expert teams in ppes and one line would be for ongoing patients who are already under therapy that might be post surgery patients which are able to get the adjuvant medical therapy or chemotherapy or radiation therapy and the other line would be the new patients and all these patients would be managed at the in the social distancing in case they are having any kind of symptoms of uh, fever lethargy and uh, uh, prodromal syndromes or if they have any history of recent visit of the get gatherings and all and such patient would be uh, taken care by the fever clinic personnel and they would be shifted to the covid facility government covid facility and once they get the clay uh, the clean check of the report they would be taken in so uh, due to the uh, tremendous and uh, rashious measures taken by the hospital facility uh, we for us uh, as a uh, do i mean in a healthcare professionals and patients of our hospital i mean at least our hospital are very unlikely to get exposed yeah thank you doctor uh, one of the viewer dilip is asking doctor with increase in cancer cases across the world what are the precautions we should take coming to food habits or other to maintain good lifestyle and stay safe uh, and away from the cancer well mr dilip yeah uh, uh, the main causative factors for head and neck cancer is uh, tobacco exposure and alcohol consumption and uh, as a combination they will be acting as a synergistic factors and uh, just like uh, i mentioned to avoid it uh, uh, to avoid it uh, one should have a healthy lifestyle should not be having uh, any of this uh, habits for this tobacco at, at any form not just smoking tobacco uh, in this part of world where we live in there is a Uh, a tra traditional reverse chutta smoking uh, it's a form of tobacco smoking uh, and uh, any form of smoking should be avoided and uh, alcohol is, is again one more uh, causative factor which acts synergistic with uh, smoking in uh, causing the cancer so the healthy lifestyle and with uh, good food Uh, timings and uh, with a decent exercise every day uh, that's how we can just uh, keep yourself healthy and uh, away from the uh, class of the cancer you can say thank you doctor doctor what are the safety measures and precaution taken in opd in the health center that's what i think i should i have already answered this question uh, we have we made single entrance let it be in patient or let it be out patient 
and uh, they, that would be handled in two lines by the two different teams in PPE and all the ongoing treatment patients will be allowed in one line and all other new patients and we want to see the consult uh, to have a consultation would be handled by the other team at a uh, social distancing and any of the uh, fever symptoms or any of the viral fever symptoms uh, would be assessed by the expert team there and they would be taken care uh, in according. Thank you doctor. And are we giving any video consultation? Yes, yes. You have asked Apollo and uh, uh, if any of the uh, person uh, I mean feel that they have uh, one of the mentioned symptoms which I already elaborated uh, in the last few minutes uh, they can definitely uh, get to us uh, with this video consultation. Yeah. Thank you, Doctor. Is there, any, is there any advanced treatment in pandemic cancers? Yeah, advanced cancer, yes. Uh, since the last two, two decades, uh, I mean, as you already mentioned, in adrenal cancer management, after they undergo the surgical therapy, or, uh, there will be a lot of defect or, uh, I mean, uh, dysfunction in whenever they underwent the resections of the oral and facial tumors. So, with the advent of advanced microvascular techniques in plastic surgery, uh, which will uh, have the optimal cosmetic uh, effects compared to the past where uh, the plastic surgery options used to be uh, very feeble. So uh, that is one uh, advanced technique, uh, it, it, that is one advanced uh, modality of uh, reconstructive surgeons, uh, surgeons uh, I would say, uh, and uh, apart from this, I've got a few armamentarium uh, like uh, leg, leg, lasers and robotic. So, few of the lesions, lesions of base gun or initial stage uh, hypopharynx lesions can be well handled with the transoral robotic surgery. And uh, apart from this, we have got uh, very good scanning techniques compared to the past uh, MR and BMR and CT we have got 3D CT uh, with that uh, before uh, checking out my treatment plan inside the operation theater I would be double sure uh, how deep the tumor is and uh, and how big the resection is going to be based on that that will improve our plan of reconstruction as well and uh, this has got a lot of uh, implications in the better outcomes of the patients compared to the past. Sir, so, uh, one of our viewer, Jay Prakash, is asking, we came across many cancer cases without risk factors and some landing with secondaries. Why? Any risk factors for blood cancers? Uh, yeah, Mr. Jay Prakash, uh, I understand in spite of having uh, no habits which I mentioned which has got a lot of uh, effect in uh, cancer uh, liability few, few people uh, get expo uh, get cancers uh, when it comes to adrenal cancer since I'm adrenal cancer, cancer surgeon I, I could only comment on that since I'm expert uh, but uh, there is uh, something called as HPV virus uh, which is the offending factor these those individuals who are not having any history of habits either smoke as well, tobacco or uh, alcohol still they develop this viral virus is uh, one factor and apart from this uh, when it comes to uh, at uh, cellular level there is something called as genetical liability uh, when if he, someone having the history of cancers in the family and uh, the, this patient uh, he or she reporters are found to be having cancer uh, without any uh, habit or history uh, so that is one uh, factor genetic factor is again uh, the main positive for the cancers in, in this in those people who are not having any of the 
have a dual history and uh, yeah i think that answers your question yeah again jay prakash is asking why the fees of doctors is high in cancer treatment unlike others yeah can i see yeah uh, no they hear uh, here hello Uh, yeah, thank you one and all. Uh, stay home and uh, stay safe. Uh, uh, okay. And uh, regarding uh, the to answer that question, I, that therapy, medical therapy or whichever therapy uh, to handle the cancer patients is uh, uh, comes out of a lot of uh, uh, I mean, uh, drugs. Which are in the which have been introduced uh, recently. When you look back in the last 10 to 15 years, uh, there are a lot of new drugs which has come into the which have come into the uh, public availability. So these uh, drugs, uh, over a time, the cost will be coming down. But as of now, as you told, few few treatment, not all treatments of cancer patients are uh, definitely a bit expensive. But I think very soon, once the uh, multiple companies comes into the this thing, the manufacture of these drugs in much of quantity, uh, the, the, I'm sure the prices will be coming down. Yeah. Thank you, doctor. Another viewer is asking, um, doctor, does cancer have any symptoms, and when it should I get tested for cancer? Well, Mr. Shiva, yeah, cancer will have symptoms, most of the cancer, but few cancers uh, comes without not much of uh, subject to symptoms, which means, uh, which the patient feels as something uh, not well of mind, something is going wrong, should I see the doctor, uh, yeah, in such, uh, uh, such uh, diseases, uh, they, I mean, they, they will be, uh, they will show up clinically in quite advanced stage. Yes, uh, and uh, to answer your question, that's your second question. Uh, as of now, there are few tests definitely to uh, pick up the cancer before even, uh, I mean, uh, before even getting exposed to it. Uh, but none of these tests are 100%, uh, I mean, uh, hundred percent sensitive and, uh, uh, and that's the reason we uh, clinical judgment uh, uh, stands the golden standard in uh, picking up the any cancer quite thank you doctor uh, doctor is there any advanced test to know the head and neck cancer prior to getting affected by it yeah that's what uh, i just mentioned that i think that should answer your question uh, yes there are tests just like we have got few tumor markers, uh, human papilloma virus markers, but uh, none of these are diagnostic. Uh, they are just maybe they, they will help us to assess the response of the patient to the ongoing treatment. However, for the diagnostic purpose, uh, biopsy, uh, biopsy, a clinical judgment followed by the tissue biopsy of that particular quietly area stands the uh, stands as the gold mark i must say thank you doctor again jay prakash like uh, thank you but for the as you told like uh, doctor fees are high but in apollo we are giving a nominal prices for this op so if you want to contact uh, any of our doctor you can contact through our uh, website www.askapollo.com so there you will understand like how the OP charges now. Uh, coming to next question sir, uh, like how early one has to report if any of the symptoms that you had mentioned need to visit a specialist if any of the symptoms that you had not mentioned. Uh, so can I have the question again please? Sir, how early one has to report if any of the symptoms that you had mentioned right right uh, 
yeah as we already uh, we have a discussion regarding the aggressiveness of the head and neck cancers they are fairly aggressive and uh, uh, and the bottom line is none of them uh, really progresses within the days any uh, you can just uh, uh, get to see the uh, specialist oncologist uh, within a couple of weeks to 3 weeks so that should be uh, good enough that has got nothing to i mean uh, give a time to uh, the particular cancer to grow from stage to the agra i mean upper stage thank you doctor uh, another viewer deepthi is asking Doctor, does the cancer symptoms same for both men and women? Uh, yeah, Mr. Deepthi. Yeah, uh, for any particular uh, cancer, let us say uh, tongue cancer, which you, I mean, uh, which which someone will get in uh, mouth, uh, the symptom will be the same. There is no uh, differentiality of gender here, uh, and uh, it's it's just like. Uh, Uh, the anatomic side, which is important, uh, the symptoms and uh, treatment plan, everything is going to be same uh, because there is no gender differentiation here. Okay. Another viewer, D Reddy, is asking, how do you determine the symptoms of lupus? Now that's what, uh, Mr. Reddy. I I have mentioned few symptoms. Uh, I would like to repeat since you have asked the similar question. Uh, blockage of nose. any ulcer which is not healing more than 3 weeks inside your mouth and uh, difficulty in swallowing and change of speech and uh, lump in the neck and uh, ear pain associated with throat discomfort if any of these symptoms are lasting more than 2 to 3 weeks and please get uh, check from your family doctor and if possible Uh, get the specialist oncologist to see you. Thank you, doctor. Another viewer, Dilip, is asking, doctor. I heard from a lot of people and in different internet site saying drinking green tea daily in lot of means helps in avoiding forming on cancer cells in your body. Is it correct? Well, uh, Mr. Dilip, yeah. Uh, this green tea is uh, it's it comes as it comes from the this idea of green tea's capacity to uh, i mean decrease or uh, i mean uh, the chances of developing cancer comes from the concept of uh, chemo prevention in medical sciences it is called as chemo prevention so a lot of antioxidants uh, which uh, are rich in this kind of uh, Uh, products just like green tea or dark chocolate, whatever uh, I mean, products which are pretty much rich in antioxidants. Uh, well, while you consume this, that will potentiate your body to have uh, more antioxidants, which will uh, usually help at cellular level uh, to damage the cancer-causing. Uh, uh, cell events so these antioxidants will help the normal cells which is going to uh, change into a abnormal cell or a cancer cell whatever the cellular events at nuclear level molecular level these antioxidants will uh, stop the the chemical biochemical cascade which will progress the normal cell to the cancer cell that's how it helps Uh, so that's how it works but uh, this is just to this will be again part of uh, i mean to maintain a healthy living style to prevent any cancer for that matter uh, it is very much advisable to consume these uh, antioxidant rich products uh, green tea and many other products just like dark chocolate and uh, tomatoes and green vegetables these are all rich in uh, chemo preventing products Thank you, doctor. Another viewer, Shalini, is asking, doctor, does head and neck cancer be cured totally? Uh, well, the, to answer the question, yeah, it depends upon the stage. For example, uh, for example, if it is a stage one, ninety percent uh, of them can be cured, uh, and if it is stage two, that 
chances to get cured will uh, drop from 90% to uh, 70%. And if it is stage 3, that again gets dropped from 70% to 50%. And stage 4, uh, again the chances of getting cured drops from 30% uh, 50% uh, to again 30% and uh, so so early the patient shows up with any kind of symptoms or a proven cancer the better the curative cure, cure uh, I mean, strategies work yeah thank you doctor uh, thank you viewers thank you for watching us in case of any emergency please call to our emergency helpline number that is 1066 and if you want to book an appointment you can book through our online website that is www.askapollo.com or else you can call to our landline number that is 0891 See you and stay safe. Thank you all. Uh, take care of yourself. Uh, try to be at home, uh, be home and be safe. If at all uh, there is no such chance, if you need to go for work or to get something essential, try to uh, stick to the two features. One is maintain social distance and try to use mouth mask. Thank you. Namaste.